Look at that. I just pinched a log. It works. You can see the inside, and I know that's a piece of ash. Not a very good piece of ash at that. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Because the more I look at it, the more my mind and my brain and my head. Today on In the Woodyard, I've got a big pile of wood and I got a customer that wants a full cord. We're gonna load it up into the trailer and as we do that, I'm gonna pull out pieces of wood and show you the differences between kinds of wood. I get asked all the time, how do I identify wood? Well, I do it a lot. I'm gonna show you some things, what to look for, the identifiers, the indicators, and what the difference is between different kinds of wood. Here we go. So this tool was sent to me from the fine folks at North Winds Tool. Uh, it is called a pinch -a log uh, It is made in the United States, got the little sticker on there, and is owned by a veteran. Uh, this company uh, sent one of these to Tony from Tony's Cool Tools, my old best friend, uh, sent this to him and he did a video on this and he mentioned to them that, hey, I have a channel and I would maybe get some use out of this and do a video. I don't really have much for tools for picking up logs. I don't have any tongs. I don't have a lot of that stuff. I've kind of just been old school and, and kind of backwards. I use my hands a lot, but this is pretty handy. It just works on a pivot system. You can pick up logs from uh, 26 all the way down to six inches. And uh, all you do is you just uh, stick the two ends into the logs and you can go on the round side or you can go on the ends pinch it and you just lift up and it just pinches together and uh so yeah it just pivots and it kind of clinches onto it and you pick it up and you can use both both handles both hands to pick it up if you got a bigger one and then this is also your release handle so you just kick it back and you can release it so let's give it a try as i get older this is going to be kind of a handy thing to have so this pile of uh rounds back here this was cut up by mike this was all tree service wood that we did and uh there's all different sizes in here. Big stuff, little stuff, small stuff, wide, fat, heavy, it's got it all. So I've never used this tool before, so I'm just gonna see, this is my first time, so we're gonna see how it works. So see how this thing just swings like this? I think what you do is you just do one of these. Oh, look at that. That is pretty slick. And then to release it, just give it a kick back. Yep. Oh, that works good. You can do it all with one hand. Let's try a little smaller one here. Oh, it picks it up really easily. And then this is your release. You just hit that and you can release it. Now, we're going to see if we can pick up the log this way, seeing as it just happened. Oh, yeah, look at that. You can pick it right up. So you can grab these pretty much in any position. I'm going to try to pick it up while it lays on its side. Pretty sure that's going to work too. Oh. Nope. There you go. He's got to dig into it a little bit. Look at that. And it just spins around because it's kind of a pivot point. So let's try a bigger one here. Let's see, let's try this big bad boy here. So if I wanted to pull this out of a pile, look at that. Normally you could never do that with one hand. It would take two hands to move this one. Now if you had two of these, each guy could have one and you could go on one side, one guy on the other side like this and the two of you could probably lift it up just fine. So it's really a nice, got a really nice finish on it um, with this blue I don't know what it's called. It's not a hammer finish. It's, it's almost like a spotted or speckled finish, but it's actually kind of pretty. It's almost too nice to use. So let's just see if I want to say, want to reach up into the pile here. So if I take this, kick it in here, go around to the back, not to be too accurate, I don't think. Yep, you just pick it right up. You set it down, you just kick it out and it works really good. Yeah, this is going to work out nice. I think I'll end up using this quite a bit on this pile when we get to it, but I just got this, so I thought I would do a video on it here and show you guys, but pretty darn cool. So it's called pinch -a log made America, and uh, you can order them online. I think it's around $120, somewhere right around there. It might be a little bit more than that, but around 120 bucks. And most of the really good tools um, that are made for, you know, lifting logs and things like that, they aren't free, but they're made really well. This is made to last a long time. This is much heavier duty than a lot of the things I've seen. So really made really well. All I'm going to go do now is uh, I have an order for wood. So I'm going to go load a bunch of wood into the trailer and uh, we're going to deliver some wood. So now that I'm done uh, pinching logs and playing with them, that doesn't sound good, but it's a very catchy name. <laughs> I'm going to go over here. I just backed up the uh, trailer with the tractor over to uh, my mixed hardwood pile, my oldest one back over this way. And I got an order for a full cord. 
of mixed hardwood and uh, this is going to a new customer it was a referral I sell wood to their next door neighbor every year and uh, this uh, people that I'm selling the wood to told me that they had wood delivered last year by someone else and it didn't burn very well so here we are this is a pile that's got mostly ash and maple and a little bit of elm and we're gonna load it into the trailer right now full cord it's going in Look at that beautiful load of wood in the trailer. It is in. Now, I got a couple things to tell you about because people ask me this all the time. Uh, how do I know how much wood I have in the trailer? Um, it's pretty easy, actually. Um, if I put in two face cords, it goes up, or two thirds of a cord, it goes up to the bottom, bottom of the sides where they are metal. So one board below what it is. And then if I go to this board, you see this line right here? If I do that level, it's a full cord or three face cords. If I go to the top level, it's four face cords or a full cord and a third. So I don't have to stack it. So you can see here, not stacked, not stacked. The wood, and I get asked this all the time, the wood in this big bin, this is a big one here. It's not as big as the new one over there, but this is, I don't know, it's nine or 10 feet high. It's a big bin. There's a lot of wood in here. I'm down into the middle of it right now. And this wood was, cut last year about this time towards the end of summer and then it was um, cut into blocks and then split well it was cut into blocks first that was cut oh i don't know it was like early winter and then it was split like in the middle of winter and thrown into the piles here and when we split it it was already partially dry i mean more than halfway dry and this is my first experiment with a bin so we made it pretty big we put pallets on the ground and then just around the outside and it's dried the wood really nice it's dry all the way through I did a moisture test on this oh probably a month ago and it was already in the low in the mid mid to upper teens so it was like 15 to 17 right in that range all of it and there is ash in here there is maple in here there is elm in here there's a little bit of ironwood in here. There was a little bit of box elder and a very little bit of ironwood. That and, and apple wood. There's a little bit of apple wood. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. I'm going to show you the different wood that I have in here. And that's kind of what I've got uh, from the tree service uh, place that brought it. It was just a random mix of stuff. It's probably a good 80% ash though. Yeah, 70% ash. Yeah, 70% ash, probably 20% maple. And then a mix of the other stuff just randomly through there. But so that's that's what's in this pile. Now, this is like I said, it's been drying here for many months now. It's dry, ready to burn right now. And that's what my customers want. They don't want wood that's going to be, you know, dry in six months or a year. Uh, I'm not really selling to people that are heating with wood. Most of the people I sell to is for a fireplace. And they're not really planning ahead for the most part. They want to order it today. They want me to deliver it tomorrow and they want to burn it tomorrow night. That's what they want. And most of the people do not know what kind of wood I have. When they ask me, I just say, well, it's mixed hardwood. And I said, in that mixed hardwood, you're gonna have a variety of hardwoods. There won't be any pine or softwood in there. I said, there could be some oak, but probably not. I usually separate that. There's probably not gonna be any hickory. There's probably not gonna be any locust. Probably not gonna be any cherry. I mean, there might be a little bit here and there of each of those, but very little. Mostly what you're gonna get is gonna be maple, soft maple, but I don't say that because people do not know the difference. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of ash. Um, there's gonna be, uh, like I said, box elder. Um, there might even be a couple, there was a couple sticks of, that I found of cottonwood in here, just a couple, but not many. We usually don't, I don't put that in. What I try to do with the cottonwood is we give that away to a guy who lets us use his trailer, so it goes away. Um, you can mix it in though. Now in my area, that's kind of the, the stuff that is the leftovers um, for mixed hardwood. It all burns great, and like I said, it's going to people that are, are burning it in a fireplace. Now I'm gonna show you some really cool stuff uh, that I found as I was going. I was identifying wood, which I always do. And I get asked that all the time. How do I know what kind of wood I have? Well, if it's in a tree that has leaves on it, it's pretty darn easy to tell. If it's a log that has bark on it, still fairly easy to tell. But once you get it to where the bark is coming off and it's turning gray and it's dry and it doesn't really smell anymore, 
Then it gets a little bit harder, but usually there's indicators, the grain, the structure, the texture of it, the weight of it, uh, the bark, obviously, if there's bark under the bark, there's things that kind of give it away. And I'm gonna show you some of those things right now. So right now I'm risking my life. This wall of wood actually arcs over the top of me. I don't hear it moving, so I think I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so I what I have here is a bunch of wood that I pulled out as I was loading Just with the variety that's in here so that you guys can see and I'm going to try to do this so that you can uh, get a good look at it Now again people ask me how do I know what kind of wood there is well because I do this a lot I'm not near as good as guys like my brother Ken who worked in the logging industry for the last 35 years or guys that are actual loggers like uh, Pete at uh, Nuts 319 those guys they can just glance at stuff and know what it is. I got to kind of examine it a little bit. And people ask me all the time, well, how do I get better at it? Well, do it more. I'm constantly looking at trees as I'm traveling down the road and I'm constantly trying to identify what it is and seeing what species it is. And there's a lot of characteristics you got to look at when you're looking at a tree. You look at the shape of the tree, obviously. Um, different trees have more of a, a roundness to them. Some of them are more peaked. The branches grow differently in different trees. Um, the limb wood is going to look different than the bark on the lower part of the trunk. Um, where it grows can be an indicator. That makes a difference sometimes. Other trees around it sometimes can help you decide because you can see the differences. Uh, the leaves obviously is a dead giveaway. Um, and uh, yeah, so you just, you're constantly studying it. Every piece of wood I pick up when I'm processing it, whether it's um, a log, that I'm putting on the processor or a log that comes in for tree service or pieces of wood that I'm loading into the trailer for delivery for firewood, I look at every single piece to identify it. I'm constantly looking at it because the more I look at it, the more my mind and my brain and my head, that's a joke, they get, uh, it gets trained to see what's there. So you kind of know what to look for. So like I said, lots of different indicators. So we're going to go over some of these right now. Now, like I said, the common one that was in here was ash. I'll show you that first. That's what's back here. So ash, um, one of the indicators is you look underneath the bark and you can see all those lines. That is from the emerald ash borer did that. The larva did that. And when it turns gray, that's what it looks like. And when it's not gray, when it's fresh split or fairly fresh, that's what it looks like. So that's ash. Now you get a piece like this that has no bark on it has no lines on it because it was an uh, inside piece, more of like a billet type thing from the middle. It's a little harder to tell, but it's definitely ash. I can see that. And then there's another piece of ash here. It's a nice piece of ash. Actually, it isn't a nice piece of ash. This one is very punky. I'm gonna see if I can bust some of this off. You can see here, it's, it's already getting kind of punky on the outside. So when you see wood like this, that's gray, punky, weathered, it gets very hard to tell what it is, but by turning it over, I could see the inside, and I know that's a piece of ash. Not a very good piece of ash at that. So there's ash. I'm gonna show you a piece of ash with bark on it. I gotta grab one back here because I didn't grab one. There should be one, yeah, right here's one. Hopefully this won't collapse on me now. So here's what the ash bark looks like. So I'll show you that up close. Oh, I gotta get my knee to a spot where I'm not gonna die here. So there is what the, the ash bark looks like, and then there's the inside. So that's ash. Now I'm going to show you the next one on purpose because it's different but similar. So the next one I'm going to show you is ironwood, which a lot of you might not have. This is what the ironwood bark looks like. So it can vary slightly. So it can be like this one right here, or it can be like the one in the middle where it's more gray. Um, it's very, very dense wood, very, very good uh, firewood like the best that there is. It's like the hottest burning wood there is in our area on the inside very tight grained and uh, a lot of times it'll have a darker kind of uh, orangish center and then whiter on the outside. A lot of trees will have different characteristics on the inside like that. So this puts out, I don't know, it's like 28 or 29 million BTUs. Uh, if you look at it really close, it kind of looks like maple. There's a little bit of checking. I know you guys won't be able to see it, but it's very heavy, much heavier than the other wood, and very tight grained. Uh, a tree this big, I've counted rings on them sometimes, and they're 60, 70, 80 years old. You get one that big, can be 150, you get one that big, which is rare for iron, but they don't usually get really big, will be a couple hundred years old. So it grows real slow. It's an understory tree. Um, 
it not it's not a tree that grows out in the open by itself it generally is underneath other trees in big woods so that's ironwood the next one i'm going to show you is elm there's two different pieces of elm here these are both elm one's kind of got a greenish color to it because it's got some mossy kind of lichen-y things growing on it there and the other one is more of the regular kind of a grayish blue color and then the inside you can see it's it's real stringy like looks like <laughs> like cable which is how it splits too and the smell is really good it's like a spicy smell so and i believe this is gray elm i could be wrong or it could be just american elm i'm not sure there's several different kinds of elm they're all very similar they're all it's good firewood here is another piece of elm and this one you can see if you look at the inside of it this is the surface of the inside of the wood where the bark is gone now and you can see the lines in there and this is a larva that gets in there i forget the name of it but they bore into it our eggs are laid into it after the tree is starting to die already and then they'll eat all the underneath the cambium layer they eat through it and they live in these little striations here kind of looks like a some kind of a bug itself just the lines but that's elm the next one i'm going to show you i'm going to go back here is maple because that's a real common one now this is soft maple not hard maple um, it could be called silver maple or red maple those are both two pretty common species of maple that we have around here we have way more soft maple around this area than we do hard maple hard maple tends to be more in the northern part of the state but that's what the bark looks like and then the inside is going to sometimes be more of a blonde a light color sometimes it can be kind of orangish and reddish like you see here now once it dries in the sun it turns gray so as the wood ages like i said before it gets harder and harder to tell so once the bark comes off it turns gray sometimes it's almost impossible to tell but i constantly am looking at wood to learn what kind to have so here's some more maple this has no um, bark on it at all you can see how it turned kind of gray and then this side's kind of got that lighter orangish kind of color um, and here's another one that's got a lot more color to it and when i split this open it was real orangish pink which happens to uh the inside of a lot of the bigger pieces of maple very pretty wood but yeah so it's kind of a pinkish orange color here's another one more of the lighter color so that's all the maple the next one i only found these these are the only pieces i found in here that we had in here this is cottonwood i normally don't put cottonwood in much you can't it burns it stinks it's nasty crap um, but for people that burn in a boiler some of those people don't care they'll just burn anything so here's the difference in um, the cottonwood now, cottonwood is a member of the poplar family or popple or aspen um, leaves are similar so this is a more mature tree you can see by the bark how it's more it's uh, got more um, depth to it it's thicker and uh, this is a, a younger limb piece you can see that was just you know cut from half of it so it starts out actually pretty smooth like poplar or aspen is and then it gets rougher as it gets older low btus um, not a lot but it does burn um, here's another piece now this is one you can see it's more grayed already and if you look at that side right there you can see how gray that got so it's harder to tell what it is the only good thing about cottonwood is that there's a lot of it which is probably a bad thing also you can get it for almost nothing or free people are glad to get rid of it uh, it burns real easy once it dries it does dry fast it's very wet when you get it stinks terrible smells like horse manure so there you go this is the only piece of this i found in here this is a piece of cherry it's a younger tree so you can see by the bark it's not real scaly yet like it gets but the inside you can see is kind of orangish color and then the end has got that orangish color to it too so that's cherry and like i said i only saw one of those this is the only piece of oak i saw in this pile because i don't usually mix the oak in with my mixed hardwood usually i have that separate this is a piece of red oak and i know that because of what red oak looks like and then this is a little piece of bark there i saw as an indicator another little piece of bark on there so that's red oak so again subtle differences in some of these this next one is a tree that a lot of people have a disdain for similar to cottonwood this is box elder um, this is what the bark looks like it's actually a member of the maple family um, grows fast grows in wet areas grows very crooked it always grows to the light so you'll see a lot of a lot of them that will grow horizontally it's a lighter wood in color lighter in weight uh, doesn't have a lot of BTUs uh, it's similar to cottonwood in that aspect um, but it burns really nice in a fireplace it burns great i have a buddy who has a cabin and he loves this stuff he says yeah bring more of that box elder so that stuff burns really nice because when you're sitting by the fire watching a movie enjoying some beverages 
in the evening if you put a big chunk of oak in it just sits there and burns and it burns and it burns and you got to turn it over once in a while because it'll kind of the flame will go out it's just a slower burning kind of boring wood but it puts a lot of heat out but this cotton this uh, cottonwood and box elder you put it on there you get lots of flames and you don't have to touch it much because it just burns through and it uh, gives you an excuse to get up and grab another cold one um, because it burns so but it does it does burn burn nice here's another piece now here's another indicator of uh, box elder you see that pink in there a lot of times you'll see that kind of pinkish color on the inside uh, especially on the more mature trees uh, the next one i'm going to show you let's see what do we got here i think i got through all these all i got left then is this one right here this one i could tell right away it was different than all the trees when it came to the wood yard and it was a very twisted you can see by looking how this split very twisted dark wood and i looked at the bark i knew right away it was some type of an apple tree now i have no idea which kind of an apple tree all i know is that it's an apple tree and it smelt like an apple when we split it smelled really good so that's the, the apple tree it's very dense very heavy wood this is a gnarly piece that had a lot of knots in it you can see that's also apple wood excellent excellent firewood if you can get apple wood get it now a lot of people are telling me oh you should use that for smoking you should sell that to people for smoking i get it so rare i just don't have that much of it you know you get a couple you get a couple sticks or a couple trees a year that you'll cut cut up i just don't get much of it and i there's an apple orchard down that way about a half mile and i asked him when i was there one time buying some apples from him you know what do you do with the dead trees he said well we we cube it up and we sell it for smoking so they know what they've got and they they actually ship it out too they they box it up in boxes and they ship it all over so they have a pretty big plantation there and so that's what they do so there you go there's your little wood lesson for the day and uh, a little later on we're going to go deliver that load so i thought i would show you a little bit more on the wood now this is the top of the pile you can see how gray this is because this stuff's been out in the sun now for many months eight nine months something like that ten months so it's getting really aged but down inside you can see the difference in the color how it's more of a a warmer color compared to the drier looking uh gray uh, that's on the top now i'm going to go through the inside here and just show you a few pieces just randomly point them out so you can see what there is now right here it's a piece of maple i can tell just by looking at it that is maple right above it Right here is a piece of ash. I can tell by the bark. And I can tell by the inside what it looks like. This piece right here is also maple. This one right here is maple. This one right here is ash. I can tell by looking at it. This one right here is ash. You can see by looking at all the tunnels in there from the grubs. This one right here. Look at that. That's pretty easy. That is elm you can tell by looking at it, that's where the bugs have lived in there and they go out and they eat the cambium layer so that's a piece of elm without the bark and here's a piece of elm down here with the bark right there that's a piece of elm right there uh, another piece of elm right here another piece of maple right here another one right here is cottonwood this one i can tell by looking at it that's a piece of cottonwood just by looking at the bark let's go over this way a little bit here Here's another piece of elm, another piece of elm. I can tell by looking at the bark, I mean the green of this, this right here is ash. Another piece of ash, piece of maple, another piece of maple. Um, let's see here, I'm trying to find one. Here's a piece of ash, you can see by the bark. And uh, so yeah, there's just a variety of things in here as you can see by looking at it. There's, uh, there's one that's a little different, I bet this is cottonwood, yep. I could tell right away by looking at this side. I could see by how it looked on the inside that was cottonwood. I turned it over, I could tell. There's not much of that in here. Here is another one right here. This is a good one. See the bark on this one? That is apple. Very heavy wood, very dense wood. That's a piece of apple. You can tell by how, how it splits. It's not, not a straight grain wood. See how twisted that is? So that is apple. Right here. Whoops. I think I pulled the wrong one. They all collapsed on me. This one here is hard to tell because there's not a lot of bark on it. Just that little bit. Now if I turn it over and look at the inside, I can see by looking at the structure of the grain here, this is also a piece of cottonwood. I can just tell by looking at it. And this is one that where there was a wound and he started to heal. Um, one right back here. You can see by looking at that. That is a piece of maple. Another piece of maple without any bark. Another piece of ash by looking at the... Uh, the worm trails. This is right here a piece of ash. 
Uh, let's go over this way a little bit and see. Here's another piece of elm. And see, we're looking at that. Here's another piece of uh, ash. You can see by the bark. That's a good, good bark one to tell. Now you see that one right there. I know what that is by looking at it. But it's gray. There's no bark on it. I can see just by looking at the little holes and how the bark is shaped. It's a piece of elm. You can see by the, the, the lines from the bugs in there again. I'm trying to find a, a piece of cottonwood, not cottonwood, a piece of ironwood. There was not very much of it in here, but I'm trying to find one. Right here, I can see this one right here. It's a piece of elm. Uh, not elm, uh, maple, I'm sorry. Um, I just don't see any other ones. I know there wasn't a lot in here. I don't want to dig through the whole pile to find one. So let's do a little dig in here. See if I can find something. Another piece of ash. This is kind of a different... Oh, right here is a piece of ironwood. Right here, look at that. Piece of ironwood right there. You can tell how it's, it's kind of a scaly bark. And then the inside, it's got... A lot of times you'll see little holes where there was a branch growing and then it grew past it uh, where the, the branch died. So I'm going to put this down and I'm going to grab a piece of ash and put it next to it so you can see the difference. So there's the ash. And here's the uh, ironwood. And I'm going to grab a piece of maple and a piece of elm. Here's a piece of elm right here. And I'm going to grab a piece of maple that's got some bark on it. I get a feeling this whole pile is going to collapse when I pull this one out. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's going down. Okay. So here is a piece of maple right here. You can see by the bark. You can see by the inside. Maple, elm, ironwood, ash. And see the differences. When you get them next to each other, it makes it a little easier because you can see the differences uh, between the, the grain, the structure of the, the bark, and then the, the wood itself, you can see the differences. So it wasn't that fun. My mic died when I was doing this tour, so I'm doing a voiceover. This is a pile of logs, and we're going to show you different kinds. Now right on top here was a piece of soft maple that I brought out to show you the comparison to what it looks like compared to hard maple with the bark. The bark on the hard maple is much different. <clears throat> it's not as flaky. It's more of a tighter, um, more solid bark. Um, but it also can be smooth, too. And like That's more of a mature tree right there. Cat's helping me. And uh, <laughs> they're always around. And there's some other ones that are a little bit smoother bark I'm going to show you here coming up. It's so like right here, there's a little bit different. More <laughs> Darn cat's getting in the way. The... Uh, the bark you can see that it's a little bit different. It's tighter. It's not as it's not as scaly, I guess, is the other kind. Now right here, that's iron ironwood right there and there. Those are both ironwood. That god dang cat. It's in the way again. And right here is a piece of hard maple. See how almost like smooth it is? It almost looks like beach, but it's not beach. But it's darn close to beach. There is some beach I'm gonna show you coming up here. So yeah, the the wood can be quite different. Here that's more of a see the difference there? The one that I just was touching last was a soft with a hard maple. Um, more hard maple there. This is hard to do when I'm just pointing at it like this because I don't know where my hand's going to go. Oh, another cat's in a way. That right there is a piece of ironwood. And we're going to walk over to a different pile. Now, over here, we've got all beech in that pile, and then the pile to the right of that is cherry. So the beech is more like a smooth, almost like elephant skin, I like to call it. It's gray and smooth. Excellent for carving in if you want to carve your initials in. <laughs> that kind of thing. So, yeah, the, the beach is quite different. Uh, it's a really good wood. but And then the ends, you can see it has that like bullseye almost. There's like a, a light spot in the middle and the darker outer ring, which is totally different than any other kind of wood. I, I don't know of anything else that's like that other than uh, white pine. gets a white ring on the outside from the sap. And then there's a piece of... Uh, right there, that's a piece of bitter nut. So it's like hick it's hickory is what it is, but it's bitter nut, which is like smooth bark hickory. That happened to get mixed into it, which is where this beach is going to go anyway. We're going to mix it in with the hickory. And then come over to the next pile is cherry. Now cherry can really vary. Cherry can vary quite a bit. It's usually more of a rough bark. You have the kind of orangish um, centers to it. Usually, the real bright sometimes like that one. Um, here's a smoother one from a smaller tree, 
and a rougher one. That's the same kind of tree. It's cherry. It's real scaly and flaky like. Oh, there's their darn cats again. They're everywhere. Um, and then <laughs> they think I'm playing or something. And then here's their young one. See how it just kind of peels off? It's more of a smooth, almost kind of a bark, where the more mature trees are generally more um, flaky like and scaly. Even, but young ones can be too. Here's a smooth one again right there. So you can see what that looks like. And a lot of times cherry, the bark will all come off of it. Um, there's a couple of pieces coming up right there. You can see them. So I'm just blabbering on about something. I don't know what the heck I'm talking about, but just kind of talking about the different kinds of wood and what to look for and that kind of stuff. I think we're walking over to another pile here. I think there's something I'm going to go show you. I'm not sure. I don't remember. We'll know when we get there, but... I don't know, I'm probably just, oh, birch, that's what we're going to talk about, birch, I was going over to the birch. So this is white birch, which is just okay for burning. Now, in some parts of the world, birch is the best wood they have. Um, parts of Europe, parts of Canada, they have birch, and that's, that's it. Or they have spruce, or they have some type of a pine. But when it comes to birch, birch is, uh, white birch, that is, is the lowest end, the white birch is the lowest end of the BTUs. Much better wood than that is yellow birch or river birch. It's more of a yellowish, flaky, um, twisted, cable-y kind of wood. More BTUs by quite a bit. But then beyond that, there is black birch, and that is way better BTUs. Um, like quite a bit more. Like as good as hickory or ironwood or anything like that. Uh, the bad thing about birch is it rots real fast. Um, I'm kind of nervous about this pile. I want to get it off the ground as fast as possible because it's sitting on the ground. And birch, when it makes contact with the ground, does not last very long. It's similar to popple or aspen and cottonwood. Um, certain kinds of wood just do not do well when they're uh, on the ground, and that's why I want to get that processed as soon as we can. And now I'm walking over to some ash trees. Uh, these are trees that we took down. There's some mostly ash trees, and I think there's a aspen or a popple in here, as you can see by the the bark, these are all ash trees that were dying from the emerald ash, but right there is a popple or aspen. There's another one, probably from the same tree we took down. Much smoother bark. Um, it's kind of a greenish color. Almost looks like beech, but it's more greenish. The darn cats are everywhere. I can't get away from them. It's like a disease. It is feeding time. I came into the barn to get my uh, stuff in. The cats just swarmed me. We got several age groups here we've got the old lady we've got a teen we got the old lady here we got a teenager there we got uh the utes the utes coming in here and then the little little bitty babies and they all get kind of nasty with each other when there's food on the plate here they're like uh a family of catholics with little kids they fight over food i know that because that's what we did at our house look at the little guys go to town there i'll put this one over here I'm gonna open up one more can because I know they're gonna scarf it up, as they say. Here comes another teenager. Here comes another ute. And then the babes. So yeah, we got several generations of cats here. I'm trying to open up a can one-handed here. It ain't easy. Here we go. I'll put this one over here because I know what a ute's. We'll come over here and scarf that one up. So I'm gonna come over this way and just be quiet because I know they'll come they'll come a running because they do. Here they come. They're a little shy because their mom is no longer here, so they're very skittish. For those of you that wanna know, the cats that are middle-aged right now, the ones we call the Utes, they're black and white. There's five of them. Their mom got hit out on the highway, so their mom is gone. And their dad, we used to call Half Cat, he got hit a couple days later, and he's the one that just got fixed. So we had two cats go across the highway and they got hit, and uh, so they're gone now. So now we got the little bitty guys here. Ooh, somebody's getting nasty. And then the teenagers over there, and then the Utes, which are the ones that are kinda still small kittens, the black and white ones. And the black and white ones are pretty darn skittish. They, for a long time, they would not come and eat, but now they're showing up because uh, there's no mom here that, to feed them. So they fight for food. So whenever we open cans, they come. But these little guys, the fur balls, they are pretty cute. These little two black ones here, another black one, 
orange one and then this little guy here that's got the multicolor thing going on 